Hi, everybody, and welcome back. So in our last video, we talked about how there's actually quite a lot of different testing we could do to try to diagnose post-infectious IBS, or the autoimmune dysmotility uh, antivincolin antibodies. Now I'd like to talk about a little bit of a misnomer, a little bit of a misunderstanding, and that is, do these tests actually test for SIBO? Now, some companies have been erroneously telling people that this is a SIBO test, for which I would say, no. Um, it, you could use it in a roundabout way, but it's not intrinsically a SIBO test. So I want to get that right out the get-go. Um, but here's how you could approach it and how you could use this test in lieu of a SIBO test, kind of, as long as you know the nuances and what you're looking for. So here we go. And I am going to pick on one particular company in this case. I have the website pulled up for Vibrant America, and I'm going to talk about their test a little bit because they actually have a really nice, robust FAQ section for their IBS Sure test. So let's go to something that they say. Is, is, sorry. If this test is negative, but I still have symptoms, is it possible I might still have SIBO? So they're kind of implying indirectly, like, you know, is, is there any chance of a false negative? Could I still have SIBO even though I'm using this test? And it's sort of implying that it's a SIBO test. Um, they say, uh, some boring stuff, we'll just skip that. Uh, IBS sure measures two blood-based antibodies, yada, yada, yada. Um, and they're accurate in this. These antibodies can also identify past exposure to bacterial toxin, food poisoning, and autoimmunity of the intestinal motility system, correct? Finally, anti-CDTB antibody has been correlated with positive SIBO diagnosis. Sure. It is still possible to have signs and symptoms of SIBO without having a positive test result on this test. Now, wait, they didn't actually answer the question. They didn't answer the question of, can you still have diagnosed SIBO, confirmed SIBO? They just said, yeah, it's possible to have the signs and symptoms of SIBO, even though this test is negative. So let me clear the air on this one. And again, I don't mean to pick on Vibrant. I like this company a lot. But what I would say is, yes, you can have SIBO that you developed from a completely different source. So if I was more tech savvy, I would have like a big pie graph or something on the, on the screen right now. But if you imagine that SIBO people, everybody in the world who has SIBO can be in a pie chart. And there's going to be a certain slice of the pie, a certain percentage of those people. I don't think we really have good stats on this yet, but there's going to be a certain number of people who have SIBO and it's because of post-infectious IBS and the autoimmune dysmotility thing that we're talking about right now. But there's an awful lot of people who have SIBO from using proton pump inhibitors or having had gastric bypass surgery or you know, having any sort of abdominal surgery and there's abdominal adhesions. Um, hypothyroidism is correlated pretty strongly with having SIBO. And I wonder if it's a two-way street where the SIBO can disrupt the thyroid in an autoimmune fashion, but also hypothyroidism mucks up the gut and the gut lining and the motility enough that you could be predisposing yourself to SIBO. In other words, this is only looking for and only diagnosing one of many causes of SIBO. So to answer this theoretical pretend person's question, yes, you can have SIBO and have a negative test result on any of these tests. IBS Smart, IBS Detects, IBS Sure, any of these, they are not going to be terribly useful as far as diagnosing other types of SIBO. But if you have a history of food poisoning or acute gastroenteritis, and you have one of those stories of, I've never been the same since, it is absolutely worth your time trying to get an understanding of this. And honestly, Dr. Pimentel himself has said, even if you don't have a known history of food poisoning, it might be worthwhile getting this test done anyway, because maybe you had a very mild case of food poisoning and you just didn't know about it. So that's coming from the horse's mouth. Now, moving on, there's another section on this FAQ that I'm going to pick on just a little bit. And I quote, I was told that this is not a SIBO test. What is IBS Sure testing? Now, again, they kind of skip around just a teeny bit. They talk about, here's what we test, here's the two markers. Um, okay. The importance of understanding the migrating motor complex can help alleviate your patient's symptoms. Absolutely. 
should both biomarkers be elevated, there is an 89% chance, 89% uh, correlation with SIBO. We're going to come back to that. Simple interventions of a prokinetic supplement and lifestyle changes that will stimulate the MMC could provide your patient with symptomatic alleviation. Absolutely, all day long. I totally agree with all of that, except there's a little nuance that I want to just insert my opinion onto. A, they never answer the damn question. I was told this is not a SIBO test. They, they should really just come right out and say, that's correct. This is not a SIBO test in and of itself because it's not, it's not a SIBO test. So they, they kind of skip over it and they don't answer that question, which I have a little bit of a problem with. But then when they go on to say, uh, let's see, should both biomarkers be elevated? There's an 89% chance, 89% uh, correlation with SIBO. So here's what you can actually take away from that. Because remember, everything statistically is a two-way street. So does that mean that 89% of people who have both biomarkers elevated have SIBO? Or does it mean that 89% of people with SIBO will have this? I know this is like kind of silly, potentially, but it's not ultra clear to the reader when they word stuff like that. So here's the thing. That is not saying that 89% of SIBO will have this test positive. It is not 89% sensitive for SIBO. That is not what they're saying. What they're saying is that if you have both biomarkers elevated on this test, the anti-CDTB and anti-vinculin, there is an 89% chance that you do have SIBO. And that I do believe. If you have autoimmunity against your motility apparatus, against the pacemaker cells in your intestines that control the MMC, you can be pretty darn sure that you're going to develop SIBO. So 90-ish or 89% chance of having SIBO when you have this autoimmunity, I totally believe that all day long. But 89% of SIBO patients do not have this positive. So these are two completely different questions. And I just want to clarify that. Not... it. It is not the majority of SIBO patients who have the cause of their SIBO be from food poisoning. Um, I think it's a very big chunk. It's definitely there. And it's probably tied for number one with PPI use. But it is not going to be 89% of the SIBO world having a positive test result on this. You're going to miss a lot more than 11% of your SIBO cases if you're only running this test. And this is the issue where I have where... Again, I really like this company. I like all the companies that I mentioned, you know, Cyrex, all of them are great. But when the labs are intentionally or unintentionally misleading both the public and the physicians, and people are taking the lab's word for it, then we're getting ourselves into this mucky area where people might get this test, it will come back negative, and then people go, okay, I guess I don't have SIBO. And that is absolutely not the way to interpret this test. So wrapping up, because I know I talked about this more than I probably needed to have. In conclusion, no, none of these tests are actually testing for SIBO. If it comes back positive, you could be pretty darn sure that you have SIBO, but do not use this as a standalone test for SIBO. You will miss a lot, a lot, a lot of your SIBO patients. Instead, you can use this to inform your decision-making for the use of prokinetics. You could use this to understand whether or not your patient has autoimmunity. You could understand, you know, the, the duration and the intensity of the prokinetic treatment. We'll do that in a separate video topic. But this is not a SIBO test in and of itself. And it's really important to understand that before you go telling people potentially that they don't have SIBO based on this incomplete picture. So still do the breath test, still do whatever you want to do for working up a SIBO patient. But this is just one piece of the puzzle. It's a wonderful piece of the puzzle, and I'm so glad that we have it here, um, but it's not the end-all be-all. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to talk about the other stuff in the next video. I don't know. I'll talk to you soon.